Hello Falcon family. Thank you for joining me on another Tech Services video. My name is Scott Boyer. I work in the IT department. Today we will be discussing Email Basics. Our topic points today will be Outlook 2016 and 2019, Email Scams and Phishing, and general practice when sending and replying to emails. Let's discuss a little bit about our current mail client. We currently use Outlook from Office 2016 or Office 2019. This would be the desktop app that you normally see in your taskbar. It looks like a little envelope with a blue O over top of it. 2016 and 2019 look very similar. You'll have the same types of tabs at the very top here, along with your tab settings. They're all pretty similar in both versions. Most of you look at the Home tab anytime you're in sending an email. You'll see new mail, new items, clean up junk, ignore, delete archive, reply, reply all and forward. These are the common functions that you use on pretty much an everyday basis. Some of the little known functions that we don't use on an everyday basis may be move, or rules, or OneNote. These three will allow us to do certain things with email messages that will help us organize our inbox. Move will allow us to move a message from one folder to another without the concern of dropping it into that unwanted folder in between. You can set rules with this tab Creating a rule will allow you to move messages from certain places to other folders. So if you get a rule for your inbox receiving a message, you can send that directly to a different folder that you already have set up for yourself. The OneNote tab will allow us to send a clip directly to OneNote. So if you use OneNote to organize, this is a great feature for you. Some other items in this tab that will come in handy will be the tags area, the find area, and the speech area. Uh, the tags area gives you some options to follow up with your flags. You can flag an email so that you know you need to go back and revisit that or send a reply email, different things like that. You can also categorize with any kind of categories you want. Uh, finding people, searching for addresses, filtering email comes in handy if you're looking for a specific address or specific message that you've received. And read aloud also comes in handy. If you're working on multiple screens or you're working around your room and you need to hear an email, you can have Outlook read it out loud for you. Next, we're going to be looking at the Send and Receive tab. In the Send and Receive tab, you have quite a few options here. You can send and receive all folders. Some of you may put a hold on sending files until you decide to send them. This will allow you to send them all from all folders that you have holding. You can update a folder if you think you're missing some messages. That's one way to troubleshoot. You can send and receive groups if you have groups set aside to send and receive messages from them. This will show you the progress of all those sent emails. You can also cancel them. You can mark a file to download. You can also unmark it to download. This is one of our main concerns. So the work offline button causes a lot of issues. If you don't know what this button is, it will actually take you off of our server. You will still see everything that's available to you in, our, in your current mailbox, but you will not see any new messages come in or go out. To tell this without being in this tab, you can look down here at the bottom of the page it'll show you that you are working offline. That doesn't mean that it's a network issue, it just means that this box is checked. 
To alleviate that, you go to the Send Receive tab, you go to Work Offline, and you click this button. Once you uncheck that button, you'll notice down here that you're connected to Microsoft Exchange. Now you'll be receiving and sending email again. In the Folder tab, you'll find a few options that will come in handy. You can create a new folder anywhere in your mailbox. You can do a search folder that will help you search for messages that you may have not be able to find. You can rename a current folder that you have. One of the main components that we use in this tab would be the Recover Deleted Items button. This allows you to actually recover items that you thought may have been lost forever. They're housed on a server that we're able to recover items that you deleted and actually removed from your deleted items folder. If you know a time and date that it was deleted, you can go back and review those files. Moving on to the View tab. You can use these options to customize Outlook to your own preferences. There are pre-built views set up here for you that you can use. If you don't like it, you can easily reset it. You have ways to arrange your email. So if you want to arrange by date, by who it's from, by who you're sending to, by categories, by subject, you have all these options on how to change where your email, how your email is arranged. You can also use these tabs here to adjust how it looks. So if you don't like your inboxes to show all the time, you can minimize them. You can tuck away in the corner. You can move your reading pane to the bottom. You can turn your reading pane off. You also have several options to just adjust it in general. You can also add a to-do bar to the right side of the screen. You can add your calendar people, or tasks. Now, we will move into our email scams and phishing, a dreaded topic for everyone. Have you ever seen an email that looks like this? Many of us have. Some have even clicked to apply here. Have you ever done that? This is a bad choice. This is a scam email. It looks like it came from inside our school district, but it did not. We see a lot of these on a daily basis, some from the same people, some from different people, some from people we know, and some from people that we don't. These kind of emails will attack your accounts and ask you for email, passwords, phone numbers, addresses, or possibly even put a file on your machine that you don't know about. There are several things to look for in an email to determine if it is a scam or if it's a legitimate email. The first thing is look at the sender. If you don't know the sender, you can even hover over top of their name to see an email address. If the email address looks legitimate, it's possible that it is a legitimate email, but we're not quite done yet. The next thing you can do is hover over any links and look at the URL that it is attempting to take you to. If it's something that doesn't look familiar, this should be a red flag. One of the last things you can look for are grammatical errors. A lot of times there are errors in spelling, grammar, punctuation, or even context. This is a telltale of a scam, email, or a fish. Please pay attention closely to all the emails that you receive, or you could be the next one that is clicking the link to give away your information. 
for the final part of our discussion, we will be talking about receiving, sending, and replying to emails. On my screen, you'll notice two different email windows. One is a new untitled message. The other is a reply to an email I received. You'll see a few different options in the header bars. For the new email, you'll have the options of adding the recipient, copying someone else onto the email, adding a subject, and then adding your context of the email. In the reply, you'll notice that it has the sender, the subject, and who it's to, as well as the context of the message already filled out. In a message you received, you will have the options to delete, archive, block the sender, reply, reply all, forward. These are the main items that you'll be using when working with an email that you received. The reply button sends an email right back to the sender. Reply all button sends an email back to anyone who was a recipient as well as the sender. The forward button allows you to send this to a different recipient. You also have your options in here to flag the message to follow up, to move the message to a different folder, to assign a policy to this sender, or to categorize. You can also have it read out loud or zoom in if you need. In the new message window, your options are a little different. From here, you can select your recipient. If you don't know the email address of the recipient, but you know their name, you can click on the To button to access your address list. In the subject, you will want to put a brief description of your email. And then for the body, start it off with a nice heading, continue with the body of the message, and finish with your signature. As you can see, my signature is pre-populated in the email message when I start a new message. The signature is a very important part of an email message. This allows any recipient to know who's sending it and how they can reach you. You can change your email signatures right from the new mail message with the signature tab at the top. By clicking on this and going to signatures, it allows you to create multiple signatures for your use. You can also define which messages they auto-populate on. To change your signature from one to another, you can click on the signature drop-down and simply click on the one you would like. Another easy way to do this is to right-click on your signature and select it from there. In new mail messages, you have the option to attach files and attach items from the include tab here at the top. You can also set the message to a high importance if the recipient needs to read that immediately. And as well as flag the message for yourself to follow up with the recipient after sending the message. That about wraps things up for our email basics video. Please continue to follow us for more content in the future. Have a great day.